Hello friends, in today's video, we are going to learn about how to manage a case of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. First of all, confirm the diagnosis of the DKA from the symptoms and the initial investigations. The presenting symptoms are abdominal pain, vomiting, tachypnea or the typical acidotic breathing which is also known as the Cosmals breathing. In severe cases, patient may present with the altered sensorium, drowsiness or coma. The initial investigations required to diagnose the case of DKA is high serum glucose level, positive serum ketone and the metabolic acidosis on the arterial blood gas analysis report. Now how to manage a case of DKA? First of all, keep the patient in the ICU if ICU is available. Put two in tracheth in the patient for the better management of patient and do urgent serum potassium because if the serum potassium is normal then we can give the insulin or if there is a hypokalemia then first of all we have to correct the hypokalemia and then we have to give the insulin. For crucial steps to treat the DKA. The first most important thing is IV fluids, intravenous fluid. The second one is the insulin. The third one is the potassium replacement. And the fourth one is the bicarbonate replacement. We will discuss about the all four steps in the detail in the next slide. First one is the IV fluid replacement. IV fluid is the treatment of choice in a case of diabetic ketoacidosis. First of all, we have to give the bolus IV fluid which is the 2 to 3 liter of normal saline in initial 1 to 3 hour of presentation. The fluid of choice is 0.9% normal saline NS followed by 150 to 250 ml per hour as per the requirement of the patient and dehydration of the patient. But the, we have to change the fluid if there is a RBS level is less than 250 then change to DNS or 5% dextrose water and change to 0.45% NS if serum sodium is more than 150 means hypernatremia. This is all about the fluid replacement. The next one is insulin replacement or insulin for the decay. But the important thing is do not give insulin before the serum potassium report. If potassium is normal then we can give the insulin but if there is a hypokalemia means the serum potassium is less than 3.5 then first of all we have to correct the potassium and then only we can give insulin because insulin infu infusion or in bolus insulin can lead to the hypokalemia and patient can go into the arrhythmia or the arrest. If serum potassium is normal then the dose of insulin is first bolus the bolus is 0.1 unit per kg IV intravenous it is not subcutaneous if for the dose is if the patient is around 50 kg then the dose is 5 unit if 60 kg patient then the 6 unit and likewise followed by infusion of 0.1 unit per kg per hour the dose is like if patient is around 50 kg then the unit is 5 unit per hour infusion if 60 kg patient then 6 unit per hour infusion and then we have to tighter the infusion rate as per the glucose level of the patient for that we have to check the RBS one hourly. The third most important thing for the management of the decay is the potassium replacement because insulin infusion and the bolus insulin both can lead to the hypokalemia. So we have to check the serum potassium every 4 hourly and if it is low then we have to replace the KCL potassium chloride. The dose of the potassium replacement is 10 milli equivalent per hour. The most important thing about the potassium replacement is the rapid correction can lead to the arrhythmia and the cardiac arrest. So it must be given this very slowly. The fourth important thing for the management of the DKA is the bicarbonate correction. Bicarbonate correction usually not required because bicarbonate is corrected when you replace the fluid and the give IV insulin. But if 
the serum pH is more than 7, then despite of low serum bicarb and the acidot acidosis, uh, do not give soda bicarbonate because it can lead to the cerebral edema. But if the pH is less than 7 on arterial blood gas analysis, then only we have to give the soda bicarbonate replacement. Continue all four treatment IV fluid, insulin, potassium replacement and if required bicarbonate all this treatment until the acidosis resolve on the ABGA arterial blood gas analysis. Serum ketone becomes negative on blood report. The goal of RBS is 150 to 200 milligram per deciliter when we are checking the RBS one, one hourly the goal of RBS is between 150 to 200. Gradually reduce the insulin infusion as per the patient's condition and the RBS level and switch to insulin to the long acting insulin like Glargin, the brand name is Lantus or Mixtard as soon as patients start eating. The important thing is 2 to 4 hour of overlap in the insulin infusion and the subcutaneous long acting insulin is important. This is all about the management of decay. Thank you.